Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about an interesting star system that actually hasn't really been in the news that much but is nevertheless extremely extremely interesting because it has four terrestrial planets in its orbit. In other words, it's kind of like TRAPPIST-1 but it doesn't have as many planets around it. So let's discuss the system known as K272 and welcome to What The Math. So let's start by exploring this system in NASA's eyes on exoplanets because uh, here you'll actually get to see what NASA has actually discovered um, around this particular star system back in when they originally found the planets. Now back in 2017 we actually realized that these four planets are a lot larger than we thought they were. As a matter of fact we are now convinced that they're actually uh, larger than planet Earth and in terms of radius we're not sure about the mass just yet. Now the star itself is actually not as bright as our sun. It's only about 27% the mass of the sun and about 30% the radius. In other words it's basically what's known as a red dwarf. But um, if you look at the four planets orbiting around it, they're actually in a very interesting, very comfortable orbit around the star. Now, let's actually first compare this to um, our own solar system, just so you can see how much difference there is. So, uh, the planets around K272 are basically within the orbit of Mercury. And because it's a uh, what's known as a red dwarf, they still actually have a, a relatively comfortable temperature, and like Mercury, that's scorchingly hot. So first of all, you can actually see the habitable zone in this particular simulation. I'm going to show it to you in a few seconds by clicking this button right here. And you'll see that um, it just so happens that the outmost planet is actually kind of sort of in that habitable zone. As a matter of fact, the so-called planet K272e may also be very very earth-like in its appearance and also its mass as well. It's about 11% bigger than our own earth and in this particular simulation it doesn't really look that special unfortunately but we're about to take a look at it in Space Engine and we'll probably witness something a little bit different. So this is a, an extremely interesting system. It is a red dwarf, unfortunately, so this implies that maybe just maybe K272 um, is a little bit too active, but we haven't really studied it just enough to see if it's just as active as Proxima Centauri, the closest red dwarf to our own uh, solar system. And so let's actually jump into Space Engine and take a look at this system in uh, this simulation because it actually creates a, an absolutely marvelous and gorgeous uh, creation here. Let's start by taking a look at where it's located. So there's Earth, try to remember the location, and there is K272. So as you can see, the actual cursor barely moved at all. Even though the distance is actually, um, I believe it's about like 270 or something light years. But anyway, that's where we're going. We're going to jump to the system right now, and you'll get to see how beautiful and how absolutely gorgeous it is. Now, the interesting thing about the system is that, just like other red uh, dwarfs, we expect a lot of these planets to most likely be tidally locked, meaning that every planet here is probably always facing their home star with the same um, surface. In other words, uh, there is going to be a bright side and a dark side that never changes. That's what we at least think of um, in terms of red dwarfs right now. We haven't really been able to see this just yet, but all of this is sort of based on the studies of um, various gas giants, but also on the fact that uh, when you run uh, various computer simulations, it seems that all the planets end up tidally locked. Uh, on the other hand, if this star is not very active, there's a very high chance for quite a lot of um, water and quite a lot of atmosphere. But if the star is active, we might not really find as much atmosphere, but we might still find water. So there are these four planets, and we're going to basically just take a look at them one by one. Starting with the nearest one, which is the uh, K272b. Now this uh, planet is going to be a little bit too hot. It's still not that close to the star, but it's close enough for it to be something like 300 to maybe 400 degrees Celsius. And it's probably on par with Venus in terms of uh, temperature. Now, we don't really know much about it, of course, uh, mostly because it's really far away. We haven't really observed it well enough yet. But if you were to imagine it, this is maybe what it would look like. 
a very hot Vetus like planet. Nothing really exciting here, so let's go to the next one, which is planet number two, K272D. Now this planet actually does have a much more dramatic and more interesting look as you can see. And the temperatures here are a little bit cooler at uh, something like 170 degrees Celsius, but still too hot for humans, or really even liquid water as a, as a matter of fact. But it does have, uh, or seems to have, really really cool looking atmosphere. So I kind of actually want to see what the surface is like by basically just jumping right there into this little canyon thing. And then looking back into the skies and trying to see the star. So, all right, we're now standing on the surface and there is that star. You can kind of see it's very, very bright in the skies and it's basically creating quite a very, very, very thick and also um, very hot climate here. So if there is any life, it's going to be extremely, extremely resilient to heat. Uh, all right, and planet number three, also terrestrial, uh, K272C. Now, this planet is a little bit cooler. Uh, the temperature here is just under 100 degrees Celsius, but still uh, maybe a little bit too hot. It sort of resembles the previous planet, but uh, has slightly more mild climate. But we could potentially expect it to have some liquid water as long as uh, there is no other greenhouse effect or as long as we actually have um, atmosphere to support liquid water. So a very interesting planet. A potential uh, world to explore in the future. But the most interesting planet, and oh, and by the way, all of these are so far terrestrial. They're basically look, look and feel like Earth. They're basically not gas giants, they actually have hard surface. But anyway, the last planet, and this is very, very interesting. As a matter of fact, in the simulation, it is a war, water world. It's basically an aquaria. It's a world completely covered by ocean. And that's really unusual, at least in this particular game, because usually there's at least some land somewhere. Now, don't forget, these are actually based on mathematical parameters, so these are basically just kind of guesstimates, they're more like procedurally generated, but also uh, based on um, some other parameters that we know about exoplanets. But despite all of this, nevertheless, it's actually a pretty cool world to explore. So as you can see, now we're underwater, and now we're right above water. A very, very interesting world known as K272e. So this particular planet is actually a potential planet for us to explore in the future. And as a matter of fact, we actually think that it is inside the habitable zone. And it might potentially, I think I said potentially like five times now. Anyway, it might potentially uh, have liquid water and maybe even um, be very comfortable for human beings to survive on, depending on the atmosphere. And the atmosphere here contains uh, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, but also, unfortunately for us, SO2. Uh, that's a sulfur dioxide, which is actually kind of sort of toxic to humans. So, hypothetically speaking, if this is actually the atmosphere of this planet, like for real, uh, we would probably not survive here for a very long time. But, once again, this is still procedurally generated, so for all we know, it might have a lot of nitrogen, it might even have oxygen here. So all of this is right now still kind of a guess. Well, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. And I wanted to show you what we've discovered so far about this very interesting, very unusual planetary system. And hopefully in the next few years, we'll actually hear more about it because similarly to Trappist, this star system most likely has more planets for us to discover. It probably even has at least as many as Trappist-1 does. And what's really interesting is that, depending on how active this uh, star system is, we might actually be able to find the future home for, hum for humanity. And because it's only about 270 light years away from us, which is uh, not that far when you really consider space distances, we might be able to find something interesting here. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something about K272 and about our galaxy and about our neighboring stars. In the next video, we'll talk about something else, so do come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.